Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing. And today let's look at trying to deal with a, a problem that we might have had if we've gone on a vacation and we've come face to face with a large river and we have no idea how we're going to fish it. Or it could be a local river that you're just starting to fish or a new section of it you're starting to fish and it's way bigger than you're used to and you're looking at this going, what do I do with this? Where do I start? It's way too big a river. Well, when I started thinking about doing this video, I thought, how am I going to do it? Uh, how, how am I going to demonstrate this? And I thought about wading my local river with just a camera in my hand and just shooting video of various features uh, and say, you know, look for this, look for that, look for the other thing. Uh, I've got lots of stock footage. I thought, well, maybe I should just go through my stock footage and find some of this stuff. But the reality is all I end up doing is showing you some of the best uh, ways to fish my local river. It may not necessarily uh, be all that applicable to where you're fishing. And the reason why I say that is my local river, you can wade it quite easily at normal flows. Um, the, the river uh, bottom is pretty well flat running across limestone bedrock. So, um, you know, it's uh, say in Caledonia, it's close to 200 yards wide and you can, in normal flows, you can wade right across the whole thing. That means I can approach that river uh, uh, in a much different fashion than if the river was a much deeper and faster in the middle. And so it will be impossible to wade there. It's over your head and you drown. So you, you, those two river, those two types of river bottoms and river contours produce different fishing situations. So I thought, how about we just sum this up into one simple thing? And it's a, just a simple concept that I learned well, about 25 years ago, I'm fishing the Bow River in Calgary at 22X, is turn that big river into a bunch of little rivers. So instead of trying to deal with the whole scope of the thing, which is too intimidating, break it down into little rivers, little features. And so, you know, uh, one of my local creeks may be 20 feet wide at some point. Well, you look at a feature on that big river that's, say, 20 foot wide, that's what you're going to fish. And you forget the rest. Who cares about the rest of the river? That little feature in front of you is what you should fish. And that's what happened to me at 22X, just south of Calgary, on the Bow River. Uh, I went out there for the first time and I saw this big brawling river uh, and I went, what am I gonna do with this? And I was with a couple of guys who'd fished it before and I started looking what they were doing and they just would go up to a little feature and they would start fishing it. So, uh, for example, a, um, just a, a current break around a big boulder, or uh, there's just some hydraulics are causing current to come together and create a seam and a, and a foam line. That's all they were doing is they was picking these little features out. So when we're approaching a new river and it's a big river, just, you know, you know, close your eyes. Don't, don't look at the whole thing. Just look at what's in front of you. Look at the little bits that you can reach. Like it's pointless for me to worry about what was out in the middle of the river when I was fishing the Bow River. I could never reach it uh, trying to wade, but I can reach what was close to me. And so all I needed to do was just look down there, and then my river became 20 foot wide instead of being 100 yards wide, whatever it is, uh, a 22x, I don't remember, but it's wide. So that's really the thing. And, and there's some certain things we should all be looking for. Looking for deep water, uh, looking for seams. Usually they're outlined by a foam line going down the seam. Looking for structure, looking for gradient changes, uh, heads and tails of pools, all these sorts of normal fishing, the way we break down, that still exist in a big river, uh, but you might have a head and a tail of a pool that really is just a small feature on the side of the river caused by, you know, just the bottom morphology. Uh, and uh, so you've got a classic river, uh, you know, pool run, pool run type of thing. And I mean, it just may be a, little, a couple of little features and you can just sit down there and fish it. I do the same thing uh, when I'm fishing uh, my local river and the, the water levels are up. Um, I don't try to think about the spots where I normally go because I can't reach them. 
I just look at what's close to me, break that down and say, okay, there's a, you know, there's a big boulder there that's causing a current break. We've got a two seams coming off it, blah, 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 blah. So it's, it's really a, a way of just you know, closing your vision down and instead of trying to see that whole river, just look at the little features that are in front of you and concentrate on that. And especially when you're approaching a river for the first time, uh, you know, it can be overwhelming when it's a big river and it's like, where do I start? Start right in front of you. Just walk up, look for a feature, fish it. You know, and the thing is, if you, you normally catch fish in that kind of feature in, in your small river back home, well, the fish are likely going to be there too. So just go for what you recognize as a fish holding feature and forget the rest of the river. And that way you can break a river down into these little chunks that you can fish effectively and you can catch fish doing it because when I'm talking about that Bow River situation, I went from catching nothing to catching fish simply because I stopped just sort of wildly casting there's a big river, let's throw my line out there, to going back to what I did back home, let's fish these little features. And it works. So if you ever have to go out on holiday and you've run into a big river or you're tackling a, a local river uh, for the first time, just break it down in little chunks and don't worry about the rest of it. Cheers.